Okay, we're backstage here at Comic Con, and I tell you what, I have to say, what's very funny is you walk around seeing all these people that you watch on TV and in movies, and then you get to meet them face to face. Look what Rainbow brought with him. That's me, I just, I brought this from home for you, that's, for your enjoyment. That's beautiful. I knew you were going to be here. You know, when you look at yourself like this, in character, yeah. Yeah. do you laugh? Uh, or do you think I've actually made oh, it? I'm scared of myself. Yeah. yeah. No, I think I, I'm, I'm convinced for the most part. Only in this photo, though. The rest of them are absolutely disgusting. <laughs> terrible. No, I have a good time. I, I love this. I mean, this brings back memories. This is like a show I did a while ago. Mm. So it's, it, it floods back all the wonderful memories from when we did Stargate, which is like a great show. Now, how did you get into the world of acting? I come from a family of actors. My father, uh, uh, who just passed, was a, an unbelievably great actor named Don Franks. And uh, he was amazing. He, he worked with Francis Ford Coppola and Fred Astaire and some of the greats, uh, Petula Clark, and, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, he met my mother on set of that very movie called Finian's Rainbow, and that's one of the reasons that my name is Rainbow. Isn't that um, so I was on Sesame Street when I was three years old. I've been doing this ever since I was Pretty much since I could walk, yeah. What did dad and mum teach you about acting that you use now in your career? Uh, they said you can either get a nine to five job and work all the time in a cubicle or you can learn to act and do stuff like this and, yeah. and enjoy life and I chose the latter. So, I, but they didn't, they just gave me the choice. They never forced me into anything. I think it was, it was just what we did. It was just natural, you know, that I was on stage and, and my sister's the same way. She's a great actor, Cree Summer. Mm. Um, it's just what we do. It's a family business. Some people are in like salts and some people are in mining and some people are actors. Some people are actors. I used to work on the music of your life in America from here in Australia. Yeah. And it was interesting, Dina Martin, whose dad was Dean Martin, she was a radio announcer. And I said, sort of a cop out on How the do you get into there, it? Right? I know, I know, Dina Martin. <laughs> and then there was Daisy Torme and her father was Mel Torme. Mel Torme. Yeah, and, the Velvet Fog. It, it, the Velvet Fog. Yeah. And I said to all these girls, like one day we were just chatting on Skype. I said, is it hard to live up to your father's memory or who they were in the world that you work in now being an entertainer? And they said, well, we, we, the first thing we do is never compare ourselves. Yeah. I, I could never compare myself to my father. He was, uh, he was one of a kind. His, his work is, is just amazing. And if anything, I can just learn from them. We're, we're just products of our environment. And luckily, the environment we grew up in was an entertainment one. So if anything, it just gave us a head start. But I could never compare myself to any of them. I think he's way better than me. I think my sister's better than me. I'm just happy that I get jobs, to be honest. Hey, but with Dad, though, he's yeah. left a, a, a living legacy in yeah. the movies that he's created. Yeah. Um, looking back at those now, um, even though he's just recently passed, yeah. when you watch him on screen, how much of it is your dad and how much of it is the actor? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, they're one and the same. I think they're one and the same. You know, any great actor is constantly acting. That's what it is, is learning from our craft. I'm talking to you, I'm taking something from you. You just did something that made me like, oh wow, that was great. You know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at you guys and I'm like, oh man, I'm really learning from that. And the next, you know, we're just sponges. So uh, how much of it was him? I guess it's all him, right? Because everything that we act, it comes from somewhere and it comes from somewhere in us. So I think it was all him. I, I only wish to be as good as him. He was like a true triple threat and a real wonderful man. He was one of the guys that helped start Greenpeace. He was, he was an activist. He was uh, outspoken about issues that he was far ahead of his time when society wasn't uh, on board with some of the, the, the things that he was doing. And I think for you, maybe his legacy for you is the fact that one day you might do a documentary on your father and what he did with something no, like that. there's so many documentaries on him that are so much better than the ones that yeah, I Yeah, but do. coming from his son, I tell you, it gives a different, a different perspective. No, I'm trying to make someone do a documentary about me. Well, we it's might. All about me. We, no, I'm we joking. We could do that. Okay. We could do that for you. But I was going to say, walking around here, what I'm fascinated about is these people that I've been talking to are so lovely. Yeah. By day, they're bankers, lawyers, the most amazing jobs. Oh, yeah. Right oh. And then they go into character mode. And I said to them, "Is being a kid what it's all about? Is that what keeps you young? For you, doing acting and getting Stargate and, and becoming the character that you had to become." Yeah. Do you go back to a childhood fantasy? I, in this, uh, in Stargate, I actually played the youngest guy on the team, and uh, I was sort of one of the only ones that went to the lost city of Atlantis with a sense of wonder. It was really, if you watch the show, everyone else is like walking in, they're like, oh, we're just here. Yeah. And my character's like, oh my God, we're in it. Look at this, this is insane. Um, 
So yeah, I feel like every job I do, we're very lucky to get to play as actors. Like we, we never left the sandbox, you know? Um, we're, the, we're the Peter Pans of the professional sort of world. Uh, we never had to grow up. So yeah, absolutely. But I feel like I act that way just normally. I'm always a child. I mean, I still play with Transformers and He-Man and I, I, you know, I buy toys. I'm out there with all these same people, all the bankers and all the wonderful people. As soon as I get up from signing autographs, I'm out there with them looking for the next like Funko Pop and all the fun toys. Well, like, I went oh, home last night and I, I do, I do. I went home last night Trains. I trains. love trains. What uh, what scale? Hornby, the the Hobby Co. All the beautiful like, trains. Is that O scale? Yeah, O scale. Oh, sweet. So I had I went home and I opened up my went to my parents' place and my dad said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm opening up this uh, wall where you built the train set when we were kids." And we sat there for hours playing I, trains. I I did that with my father. I actually just found his old train set. Yeah, I yeah. haven't set it up yet, but yeah. But then I, I collect it. old radios. I'm a, I'm absolutely obsessed. I like to take the old trains yeah. and then I do graffiti on them. As so you do. Like, yeah. <laughs> so they look like a rainbow? Yeah. No, so they're like, all, yeah, they're colorful <laughs> and they got all my letters and all my friends do it and then we let them run on the track and oh they're amazing. God. Yeah. You know, in America, there's a big resurgence. I'll tell you about something that's really cool. If you like AM radio, and we're changing deviation. No, like big old, you're listening to KWXY. Oh, yeah. All these old radio enthusiasts who were old technicians and presenters of the time are now collecting all the old valve technology that has been just thrown away. This is and they're res no, no and they're restoring it all. And they're putting them back on the air. And I'm telling you, that big American beautiful sound of radio, yeah. it's coming back. That sounds great. Yeah. I'll listen to that. Yeah, so there you go. And then they digitize it and it gets compressed yeah. and it ruins it. It could be another thing. cold thing. Well, Rainbow, thank you very much for your time. Oh, you're wonderful. Fantastic. An absolute pleasure Fantastic. to talk with you. There thank you. There you go. Another great interview backstage here. Come down to Oz Comic Con. <laughs>